Well, it's time to get a little more exciting with our font choices, because remember, when you are specifying fonts in your HTML and CSS, you need to be mindful of the fonts that most people have installed on their computers. Even if you have hundreds of fonts on your computer, most people won't have all the same ones. There's differences between Windows and Mac. There's differences between uh, older and newer operating systems. So you can't just specify any font and expect people to see the same thing that you see. But with Google Fonts, because they're on the web, so they download to your page when somebody opens your page, Google Fonts are not dependent on the user's own computer. So we get more choices to use some uh, interesting and unusual fonts. So to demonstrate how we use Google Fonts, I'm going to use a page similar to one we used in a previous video. It's only got two different font families on it. The paragraphs uh, have one font family specified or a particular type, right? That's easy to read at a small size. And the headings, there's one H1 and there are two H2 headings. All the headings are a different font, and you can probably see that just by glancing at it. And if you think of the difference between serif and sans serif, which is covered in the book, you can see probably that the headings are sans serif. They don't have serifs, and the paragraph text is serif. So here's our HTML. We only have one style sheet attached, which is what you're used to up until now. And as I said, it's a similar page to one you saw in a previous video, nothing fancy here. Um, the text is wrapped up in a container div from top to bottom, which allows us to make the whole block more narrow and to put a thin border around it. The CSS uh, is also similar to a previous one. And you will see that we have specified a generic font family in the head, just one font family, and it is the generic serif. And for the headings, both H1 and H2, we have specified the generic sans serif. So the first change I'm going to make is I am going to add a named font that is very common on both Windows and Mac, and it's going to be a serif font. Its name is Cambria capital C, comma after it. And of course, I keep the generic because if somebody doesn't have Cambria, their browser will default to the right. So it will load serif instead if they don't have Cambria. And then down for my headings, I am going to add Calibri, Calibri, capital C, comma, which is a sans serif font. So my generic makes sense. My named font is sans serif, and if they don't have that, it'll default down to sans serif. So I'll save this, and when I go to the page, pause for a moment and look at this, and then when I reload, keep your eye on the text and see the differences. Okay, so it's not a gigantic difference, and that's good because I've matched my generic, what we saw previously, to the kind of font family that I want to appear if people have that font. So what about the Google Fonts? So when we first go to the Google Fonts page online, um, it looks like this. And we've actually got a lot of fonts. Um, about 800 fonts are available now. Uh, they add more every year. And uh, how are you going to look at 800 fonts, right? And you can browse a little bit. You might see something you like right away. But a really good way to get started is, for example, if you know that you want a headline font, you can make sure that this uh, option is clicked, Display. And say you definitely want your headline font to be sans serif. Well, you can uncheck serif and you don't want it to look like handwriting, and you don't want it to look like a typewriter, monospace, right? So you can unselect that. And then you've got your number of fonts down to um, almost 500 out of 800. So uh, sort of a headline font, there's about 500 of those. And I'll just scroll a little bit till I see something I like. 
And let's say when my eye falls on Oswald, it's exactly what I want. Now, let's see some options that are available to us. These options are available on each font when we roll over the font itself. So for Oswald, I could look at it, uh, I could look at the whole alphabet for the font, and I could increase the font size, so I could see how is it going to look when it's big. Uh, whoops, maybe we don't want to see it that small. And I could look at only the numerals in the font. Um, what are my other options? I could look at it as a paragraph. This doesn't look great as a paragraph, especially not if we were going to go down to uh, a readable size, maybe for advertising. It's really a display font. Uh, so back to the sentence. So let's say that I've decided that I really like Oswald and I'm going to choose this as one of my two fonts for this assignment or for this web page or website that I'm making. So there's a plus sign on every font and I'm going to click it. And as soon as you click the plus sign, you see something that was not there before. There's this black bar at the bottom of your screen. Since we've only selected one font family, it says one family selected. And there's actually a lot of other things on this panel. So when you click the minus sign on the right hand side, it opens up. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. So I'm going to close it for now. So now I need to find my second font. And uh, since the instructions say it, this one has to be opposite of the one we've already picked. So that one was sans serif. And so we need to pick a serif. And because this is going to be the paragraph font or the main text font, it should not be a display font, right? Display means headline. And so if I unselect well, now I actually uh, get the number of fonts down to around 170, so it's fewer. And I'm going to just scroll around and just look uh, for something that catches my eye that I think would look nice as my paragraph font. And I see this one called Arvo. So I could look at a few of the things, like how does it look in a paragraph? How does it look if I make it a little smaller? Uh, yeah, around there, right? Looks very readable. So I'm going to hit the plus sign again. And then what we've got is we have two families selected. So I've got my two font families done and selected. And I go down to the black bar at the bottom, which you saw before, and I open it up. And this is how we're going to get the code that we need to incorporate these Google fonts into our web pages. So I'd like to show you what is on the Customize tab here on this uh, screen, this pop-up that shows us our selected font families. So if you click Customize, um, you will see that you can choose some other styles for each of the families. Now, not all font families have this option. Some have many more, some have no extras. But what will happen, I want you to first look at load time. Okay, always pay attention to this button here, which right now says fast, meaning these fonts will load quickly. So if I start selecting all the fonts, I'm sorry, all the styles for the fonts, I end up with a very slow load time because I've got to load, instead of loading two, I'm basically loading seven entire copies of the fonts. So in most cases, I would say that we do not load all the fonts, uh, all the styles, sorry, I keep saying that. And we just go, we just go with the defaults that were there when we opened it up and especially when they say fast. All right, so to continue, we need to remember to go back to the embed button because on the embed tab, that is where we're gonna find our code. So have a look here. The code for both of the fonts that you have selected for both families, the code that you will put in the head of your HTML is right here with standard selected. Do not go to import standard. Standard is correct. All right, so you're just going to select 
and do a copy and then you're going to paste into your HTML document within the head element. And where are you going to put it? You need to paste this into the proper place. You want to put it above the style sheet you already have. So I'm going to paste it right here so that you can see what it looks like. So this link tag and everything in it was created by Google Fonts because of what you put into your collection. It's got Oswald and Arvo and the punctuation and that vertical bar, which is called a pipe, that stuff is all absolutely necessary. Don't change anything in here because if you do, the fonts won't download. So this link tag will send a request to Google server when this page loads and then the fonts will download. And that's why we paid attention to the load time. We don't want them to take too long to download. How are you going to add these two fonts into your CSS? Well, you are going to come down to this part. This is where you're going to get the correct way to write the name of the Google font into your CSS. Not into the HTML, but into your CSS font family property declaration. All right, so you can see that here is Oswald and here is Arvo. And so for each of those, perhaps they're short enough that you could type them correctly. But if you want to be perfect, maybe you actually want to uh, copy and paste so that you don't make any mistakes. So we're going to add that in now. I'm going to make sure that I saved my HTML and I'm going to go over here and let's see. So my serif font for the paragraphs is Cambria and the new one I picked is Arvo. Okay, and like I said, Google Fonts wants you to put quotes around it like this, but when it's one word, you don't need to. So I'm going to take those off. And then my other font family, I only have two. That's where I'm going to use Oswald because Oswald is the sans serif font. All right, so I am going to save. And then I'm going to go to my page and so sort of stare at the middle of the page and watch for when it changes. I'm about to reload it. And these are my new Google fonts. Now keep in mind that if you are not online, the Google fonts won't download. So say you're riding on the bus and you pick up your laptop and you open up this page, it's going to look the way it looked a second ago because these Google fonts will not load when you're not connected to the internet. But the next font to the right in your CSS will load. So you would see Cambria, you would see Calibri, and it would still look all right. Now I'm going to pop back over to Google fonts and I'm going to show you how to search for a font family by name and also how to uh, delete fonts that you may have already selected. Because remember, you usually do not want to use more than two font families per page or even per website, right? You don't want to overload your page and make it heavy and slow to load with too many fonts. So uh, I had earlier seen a font that I liked called Cherry Cream Soda. And all I have to type in there is cherry and it pops up. And I think that this is going to be a really nice uh, headline font to use instead of instead of what I had before. So I'm going to add it. And then I'm going and if we open up our menu, we can see that now I have cherry cream soda. And I'm actually not going to keep Arvo and Oswald so I can, get rid of them just by clicking that minus sign that's beside their name. Um, I want to add one other font that I know the name of. So I'm going to search for that one. It's called Gentium Basic. Not Gentium Book Basic, but I'm going to pick this one, Gentium Basic, and I'm going to add it. And then I can do the same things that I did before. I check my load time and I say, great, it's nice and fast. I can look at the styles available to me if I want to. I'll go back to embed. 
Then I'm going to get my link element for my HTML document. Copy that. And also I'm going to get my font family names the way they need to appear in my CSS file. And note the way they are written here. And we're going to look at that when I paste them in to the CSS. First, I'm going to get rid of the old Google fonts. I don't want them all to load. I'm going to use different ones now. So don't overload your fonts. Only call the ones that you really are using in this page. So I put my new fonts in there. Something I wanted to show you is that when a font name has more than one word in its name, in the link tag in your HTML document, you are going to see these plus signs. So here I chose two fonts. Each one has more than one word. So one font is named Cherry Cream Soda. The other font is called Gentium Basic. So you see how this came into my HTML. But how am I going to style these in my CSS file? And remember that Google, Google Fonts tells you Right? They will show you right down here, and notice that the plus signs are never used in your CSS. And because these font names have more than one word, you must put quotation marks around them. Now you can use single quotes, as Google does, or double quotes, like I prefer, doesn't matter. Go into my CSS, and here, instead of Arvo, we are going to use Gentium Basic. And remember, if you spell this wrong, that font will not load. You have to be perfect in your spelling. Notice also that the comma has to come outside the quotation marks. Again, you put that comma inside, that font is probably not going to load, so you wouldn't see it. So I'm going to get rid of Oswald. I don't need that anymore. I'm not using that one. Cherry cream soda, and a comma after it, right? All the font names have to be separated by commas. So I will save, and when I reload this time, it should look significantly different. Because that cherry cream soda font that I use for my headings, that is a pretty different looking font. Uh, so, we're done with Google Fonts. I hope you know how to use them now. Look carefully at this and make sure that you do the correct thing in the head area of your HTML and the different correct thing in your CSS document. Don't get confused. Never use more fonts than you need because it'll make the download longer. That would be bad for your users.